Hello, and welcome to A Layman Looks at the Word with Hal Richardson. We're starting a new program this time called The New Jerusalem. It is actually a different name for where we'll spend eternity. It is going to be the city of God and a home for his bride where we'll come and actually meet and live with our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and us being his bride. God wants to move his headquarters and all heaven to this planet. He loves mankind and he enjoyed walking in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve and communing with them. The Lord made man in his image so that he could have someone that could be on the level that he is to talk with and to fellowship with throughout eternity. And that was his plan. Adam's fall from Eve's temptation caused problems that God could only fix by the sacrifice of his beloved and only begotten Son, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus of Nazareth. The city in which God and Jesus will eventually live is known as the New Jerusalem, and it will be here on earth. In Ezekiel 37, 21, And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them to their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all, and they shall no more be two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves with any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned, and I will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And David my servant shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments, and observe my statutes, and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them, and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So we see by this scripture that men are going to continue to multiply, and there's going to be more and more people with God living with them. In Ezekiel 40 through 48, we see that the third temple is described. Nothing like that has ever been built. It is grander than Herod's temple, which was in Jesus' time on earth, and a rebuild of the second temple built during Ezra and Nehemiah. It may be that this temple will be built during the millennium. For in the New Jerusalem, there is no temple. 
the description of the borders of Israel in Ezekiel's writings is very close to what Israel's borders are today. In Ezekiel 48:35, it says that in that day the city would be called Yudhe is here, which is the name of God. In English, we call that Jehovah. Continuing, he says, this city has 12 gates named for the 12 tribes in verses 31 to 34 of Ezekiel 48. In Isaiah 66, 22, for as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord, and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring to all flesh. This is a revelation of the prophets about the New Jerusalem. It leaves a lot to the imagination. Because of the mention of those who had transgressed and their worm not dying, this would imply the punishment of the lake of fire, which is described in Revelation 20. In Zechariah 14.16, It shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not and have no rain, there will be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. In that day there shall be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. In Qumran, the Dead Sea Scrolls had been found where there is a New Jerusalem scroll written by the Essenes over 2,000 years ago that also describe the things about the New Jerusalem. But by far, the most descriptive scripture of the New Jerusalem is in the revelation of Jesus Christ to St. John. I have studied this book for over 40 years and taught on it as well. I could not see how the description of the New Jerusalem would be possible. The size would put the earth out of balance. I know that with God all things are possible. The details are specific in the book, and I did not see this as an allegory. So I prayed and I fasted and I waited on the word from the Lord. What I comment on in this teaching is what was revealed to me some time ago, but God told me to teach it now. The first mention of the New Jerusalem is in Revelation 3.12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. In Revelation chapter 20, we see the end of the millennium and Satan cast in the lake of fire and the great white throne judgment and the earth 
purified by the fire of God. And then in Revelation 21, 1, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. The Bible states in several places that the Lord made the earth to stand forever. Ecclesiastes 1.4, Psalms 104.5, Psalms 78.69, and Isaiah 65.17. It also says that there is a new heaven and a new earth at this time. In 1 Peter 3, it tells about the earth and the elements burning up. So how do we reconcile this? In Revelation 20, we see that the rebellion of mankind against Jesus and Jerusalem and the fire of God comes down and destroys them. This is the same fire of God that was a pillar of fire in the Exodus and the fire of heaven that came to sit on the disciples on the day of Pentecost and started the church. John the Baptist said that Jesus would baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire. It is also the fire that will judge the Christian in 1 Corinthians 15 and burn away wood, hay, and stubble, yet purify gold, silver, and precious stones all which are the fruits of life. This fire baptizes the earth in fire not to destroy it, but to purify it. The earth was born out of water in Genesis 1.1, and then it was baptized in water in the flood of Genesis 6, and it will be baptized in fire at the end of the millennium to cleanse it from all evil and make it holy for God to move here. The earth is a living thing made by God for us to live in. Well, we're going to have to stop there for now. But we will continue next time with the new heaven and more about the new earth and the new Jerusalem. It's all about our Lord Jesus and our God the Father that will come and live here. And if you don't know him today as your Lord and Savior, that's your ticket to get into the New Jerusalem. So if you don't know him, ask him into your life today. This is Hal Richardson. Join me next time. We'll continue with the New Jerusalem. Bye for now.